In the second day of scratch instruction, we are going to have students revisit their first scratch game, the ball game. To do that, what I'll need to do is make a copy of ball game one. So you should instruct them to open their first ball game. If they're using the offline version as I am here, they can do file, save as, choose the directory where they want to save to, and they should call their game ball game two. I'm adding a little bit more information since I'm saving this for you as well and want to make sure that I know this goes along with the video. If they're working in the online version, they would do a save as a copy from the file menu and change the name to ballgame2. The first thing you may notice is I have some notes here. These are actually comments that I've added to the code that I created in the previous video so that when I upload this project to the web for you to check out online, the code will have a little bit more guidance for you as you're looking through it. It's very easy to add comments. You just shift click on any block or you can right click on most computers. I'm going to shift click here, choose add comment. You can type several sentences. Notice it will expand and then you can make it contract to save space. So it's a really good idea for students to eventually get in the habit of adding comments. It will make it easier for teachers to find specific parts of their work and it's really great if they're going to be collaborating with other scratchers on more complicated projects. To delete a comment, I'll just shift click directly on the comment and choose delete. You could also have a more general comment that is outside of any specific blocks by just shift clicking anywhere on the stage. Add comment. So because in day two you want to keep emphasizing the game design process, the steps which include discover, design, develop, debug, and deliver, I've put the challenges for this game in the context of those steps. So instead of challenge one, the first challenge I present to them as discover, the discover challenge for today. So challenge them to discover more of the graphics and more ways to use costumes. So what they're going to do first is to replace the cat with a new player sprite from the library. So of course you want to go to choose sprite from library and look for a sprite but what's the great instruction to give to students if you don't want them spending all day looking through a bunch? Maybe they should filter out. So they could start with the sports category. They will quickly notice however there are not many characters provided, not many people sprites for doing sports, but could go ahead and choose, say, Adrian as an appropriate sprite, dressed for soccer. Why didn't I delete sprite 1 before adding Adrian? Well, look at sprite 1. We've got all that great code. If I delete sprite 1, that means I'd also be deleting all of that code. Why would I want to waste all that valuable time? What I could do instead is load in a new sprite, in this case Adrian, and drag each of those blocks onto Adrian, like so. Don't do this, I just want to demonstrate. I'm going to drag two of them over and demonstrate that they're overlapping. If you've watched the debug tutorial, I showed that there can often be blocks hiding behind other blocks. So using the cleanup option by shift clicking on the empty part of the script area is a great way to make sure that there is no overlapping code there. I like to try and keep my code vertically oriented, each of my scripts. As a teacher, that allows me to to easily scroll through the different scripts that are there as I'm demonstrating code. You also notice I've zoomed all the way in to make it easier to read the code blocks.
So you could add a new sprite and then drag your code over. Of course, if you or your students want to recreate that code as a review, I'm not going to stop you. But let me show you a way that I think works even better than that. And this skips to challenge number two, which I'm calling the design challenge. In the design challenge, students should add a costume to their new sprite so that they can animate their sprite. In this case, it probably makes sense to have the sprite be able to run since it's a sports game. Well, there are a few problems. The biggest is this. If you click on costumes, Adrian has three different costumes, but only one that's tied to running. There's running, standing, and jumping. So that might be more appropriate for a basketball type game, but notice it doesn't work so consistently for the soccer game. So let me show you a different way to change a sprite. Rather than loading in one like so, I'm going to shift click on Adrian to delete that sprite. I'm going to go back to sprite 1. I would like to rename this sprite, so I'm going to click on the info button, the I, and change the name to player as I've done in other games that I've been demonstrating. So now we have a player sprite. Instead of adding a new sprite from the library, why don't I change the costume? This gives a few advantages. One, it will keep all of the scripts that I have attached here, which works really well for this case where there are actually five different scripts. And in some cases, there could be dozens, even hundreds of scripts. I hope not hundreds, though, because as a teacher, going through hundreds of scripts would be kind of a drag. So instead of loading the uh, new sprite from the sprite library here, click on the costumes tab and you can choose costume from library now this has another advantage watch when I click choose costume from library notice the very first sprite it's showing all the individual costumes for that sprite see if I go back to the sprite library that 1080 hip-hop character only has one costume that we see here Adrian also, just one costume. So it can be hard to even know which sprites have multiple costumes. You can check by clicking on a sprite and it will tell you how many costumes are available. But I really like to do it through the costumes tab. So if I choose costume from library, notice now I see all three of Adrian's costumes and all the other costumes. This can be quite a bit to scroll through. So Definitely, when choosing costumes, it's a good idea to be using filters so as not to be going through too many. If we go back to sports, we'll see only two of the sprites in sports have multiple costumes. Neither of them is so helpful for running. So I want to save you a little bit of time and go into fantasy. Why? Because notice in Fantasy, there are several sprites that have multiple costumes. And some of those costumes are designed for walking and walking and running pretty close to the same thing in terms of how you would design them in a game. So by looking at these, it might be good to suggest to students that they go with either Giga or Pico because those two sprites have four frames for walking. Walk one, two, three, four. I'm going to go with Pico for this example. So I'll start by loading walk one. And then I can load in each of the other walks. By clicking and holding the shift key at the same time. So I'm shift clicking each of those for walk two, three, four. That should let me add multiple costumes. I now have Pico walk one, walk two, walk three, and walk four. It could also be helpful to add one more Pico sprite. So I'm gonna go back into fantasy, 
and add Pico A, where Pico is just standing. So when the character is standing still, it's helpful to have a sprite just for standing. And we'll use these walk versions. For now, I'll leave the head the same, but eventually I want to show you how to remove the head. Just the, the opposite, if you've done the maze game tutorial already, it means that you removed the cat's body. So here, you might want to replace the head in a certain way. But I recommend keeping the head until you're ready to design a new face. It'll just make it easier to deal with the scale here. So now I have five costumes from stand to walk. I want to delete my other costumes. So I'll select each of the cat costumes and delete, delete. Now if I click the green flag, what's going to happen? I can still kick the ball in the direction I want because I've programmed it to use the direction that my sprite is going. But I no longer have an animation of the character kicking the ball. And the character isn't running. It's just sort of showing that one first costume. Let's see why. I'm going to click Stop, go to Scripts. So in scripts, I don't need to make any changes to my when key pressed code. But as soon as I get to the final script, notice the names of the costumes. It's alternating between costume 1 and costume 2. But I no longer have a costume 1 and costume 2. I have these different names here. In fact, what I'd like to do with Pico A is change that to Pico stand. Since the other ones are more descriptive, and I'll even match case for that. So now I have Pico stand and the Pico walk. So I'll need to change the costume codes here. But I didn't have a code that was just alternating between costumes. I was using the costumes there was a static costume for running and then a specific costume when kicking the ball. So I need to create a script that will alternate between four costumes. If you did the maze tutorial, you'll know that in the looks category there's a block called next costume. But why won't next costume work well here? Because it will include Pico stand. It means it would go through the four walk costumes and then have a stand costume. So it'll look like Pico keeps standing still, like voguing each time there's a cycle through that walk script. So I'm going to need to change that. But I do still want to know the direction that Pico is moving in. So I'll keep the set direction code there. And I'll also keep the if key space pressed. I'm just going to remove this other code here. Now, I recommend walking students through finding the costumes on their own because I like demonstrating something on the screen at the beginning, but by the time they're working with how they want the sprite to move, give them plenty of time to mess around because you want to encourage them to have animated sprites when they're making their own games. So really, one of this, these challenges is to make sure that they're thinking about sprites in terms of costumes that can be alternated to show different things during the game. So what would I need to do to animate that sort of walk and hopefully make it look a bit more like a run? Well we'll need to have four different switch costumes. So it will be... But do you notice another problem? We will need to make sure that Pico is moving when it happens. So 
we would have to put a script inside each of these when down key pressed up arrow left arrow right arrow and that's going to make for quite a bit of code so i'd like to show you something that's worth introducing to students what if we could create a new block called run create a block called run and that block would handle the alternating between those costumes let me show you what I mean. Have you seen the more blocks category here? Click on more blocks and then click make a block. This allows you to create custom blocks. So I'm gonna call this run. And see how there are options? You can add more features to this script. Another input that will control how the script runs. So let's add a number input and call it speed and click OK. So now there's a block called run and it has a value for speed. So you can put that block into anywhere where one of those keys is being held. So as long as say the down arrow key is held, we want the player sprite to run. But how do we build that block? We need to define it. We need to put those switch costumes together. So let's make some more room. Define run speed switch costume. So I'm gonna say switch costume. Let's just duplicate. Once we have two, let's duplicate again. So I'm shift clicking on the top one to have four. Pico walk one, Pico walk two, Pico walk three, Pico walk four. Let's just see if it works. So right now it will define run speed and switch those costumes. Now I don't have to put a forever because remember this when down arrow key pressed creates a loop so while that down arrow key is held the code will keep executing over and over again as if it was in a forever loop so I have run one let's test it I'm gonna hold the down arrow key and it does go down but it is not doing what I want it to do. Why not? Well look, it's switching these costumes instantaneously. They're switching so quickly that you can't see the difference. So what if we grab, let's see, we don't need these extra costume blocks, so I'll drag those over into the drawer to delete them. But couldn't we use a weight block in between each one? So I'll just duplicate three additional weight blocks and then the original. Let's see if that works. Okay, now I'm holding the down arrow key and it is moving down. But there's a problem. The sprite is moving much more slowly see in other words that those weight blocks are all adding up and preventing the move from happening consistently so what we'll need to do is create another when down arrow key pressed when down arrow key pressed run so that way these run in parallel, these two scripts. Now if I press the down arrow key, it works. Up, down arrow key. It is working, see? But I need to adjust the time, it's a little bit too slow. But what about that speed? Notice, I can drag that speed 
into each of my sockets. See how it's the same shape? And it even shows. And can I point out something? The first time that I dragged my speed in, I did it like this. I grabbed it kind of in the middle and then came down here and it wasn't going in. You'll find that it works best when you're moving blocks to click and drag them from the left side and then lining it up to the left side of the socket because it's the cursor position that affects where that goes. So generally a good idea to click and drag from the left side of a block just to get in the habit of having more precise control over where those blocks go. Now this is a little bit different. See that one? That's where I want to adjust the speed. So I'll say 0.05 there and then that input gets put into each of those blocks. That's going to save a lot of time as I'm adjusting speed. I can try out different values in just this one block rather than having to put it into all the individual blocks. So I definitely get faster animation when I'm pushing the down arrow. Down arrow. Might be a little bit too fast, so I'm just going to say 0.1. And then I can duplicate each... Oh, rather than duplicating, I'm just going to drag the block over so I don't have to delete the code for everything there. And I'll duplicate the run block that custom block. Or duplicate and change my key here. So many different ways to do this in Scratch. Duplicate, right arrow. Now, as long as I'm holding a key, and moving, I get my run.